All right, here we go. Oh my God, it's my pop time! I got everybody freaked out every time I do that. I hope Andrew showed <laughs> Doug losing his mind <laughs> because I yelled into the mic. Anyway, today's giveaway is Maps Anabolic. This is the foundational Maps program. Great place to get started. Great workout to build muscle, foundational strength, get good at bench press, squat, deadlift. Anyway, here's how you can win free access to Maps Anabolic. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make it a good comment, and if we pick your comment, you'll get free access to Maps Anabolic. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Also, real quick, listen to the very end of the podcast. We actually read YouTube people's or viewers' comments, and you get to see our reactions. Some of you... <laughs> Your comments suck, uh, but we read them to it anyway, and then you see what our faces look like afterwards. So listen to the very end of this show. One more thing. Don't go anywhere. Don't fast forward. Two programs on sale, 50% off. Two very effective muscle building programs, MAPS Strong and MAPS Powerlift, both half off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code August Special with no space for the discount. All right? Enjoy the show. Dude, I was thinking about you the other day, Justin. Whoa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Uh, in the like, shower. Like how? No, 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 no. You know what Wait, I was doing? What, what kind so, of thoughts? So I was doing a workout to try to induce sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, which we'll talk about here in a second. We haven't talked about this in a little while. Ooh. For my lower Does your body. brain really operate and work like that way? Like that's what it's being said. I need like, to induce. I want to work sarcoplasmic hypertrophy today. Like is that how it sounds? It does. But or the does voice, say, like, the I'm voice, gonna get a pump today. The voice in my head isn't sounding. Like that's what that, mine though. sounds like. Yeah. I'm gonna get a fucking pump today. That's, wow. what, that's, that's what goes on in my that's head. Aggressive. But yours is. Yeah. I'm gonna get a sarcoplasmic. Not pump that voice today. though. The voice is wrong. The <laughs> words are correct, <laughs> but the voice is wrong. No. So I was. I. I have it by my I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to train for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Yes. Known as the pump. So anyway, I'm doing higher rep leg stuff which i really do because i hate and i'm getting this really intense leg pump and here's why i thought about it justin okay i in between sets i like to walk around i made the mistake in the past of sitting in between sets of high rep leg stuff which is terrible because oh, you get up and forget idea. about it so i'm walking around and i could feel because i have a pump right i could mm. feel my cakes shake yeah like, duh, 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 yeah duh, duh, duh. making earthquakes and i was like this is what justin feels like all the time all day all day long yeah so here's what i want to talk about with so a lot of people don't know this about so sarcoplasmic hypertrophy I actually pulled up a definition so that when you get the pump that's called transient sarcoplasmic hypertrophy meaning it's this temporary growth of the muscle because blood fills the muscle but is water included in that? Water. Yeah, okay. yeah, of course. Well, a big percentage of blood is water too. But you can actually build muscle without building muscle fibers through what is known as sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is an increase in the volume of the sarcolemma and or sarcoplasm. Now, here's the important part. Accompanied by an increase in the volume of mitochondria, sarcoplasmic reticulum, T tubules and or sarcoplasmic enzyme or substrate content. In other words, all the stuff that makes up your muscle size besides muscle fibers that are also important. These are also important things that are involved in the function of your muscle, the performance of your muscle. They're involved in the building of your muscle. You can actually increase the amount of these things by training and utilizing the pump. This is why bodybuilders for a long time have loved and noticed that the Is pump is far like an exaggerated that's it. Well, that's it. I was yeah. just going to say that's the research that supports why BFR Absolutely. is so beneficial because you're obviously not breaking down like you would if you're heavy loading a barbell squat or doing yep. something like that, but you are getting a massive pump from it. Yeah, and if you think about it, you know, if you were to look at all the things that make up your muscle size, your muscle fibers are actually not the majority. It's the sarcoplasm. It's all the other stuff mm -hmm. that makes up the size of your muscles. So in terms of, and it also helps performance. That's that's a key I want to make, and not just looks, but if you want to make your muscles look bigger, rounder, fuller, training for the pump, going through phase. This is why in MAPS programs, uh, we always have, or typically we'll have some kind of a pump phase in there. Yeah, It's a part of developing the yeah, muscle. But, but it actually, so if someone always trains this way, now I feel like I fell in this category for a really long time. If you I always train. Always train yeah, this way. Yeah. And one of the uh, critiques I have on this is it, it seems to be most beneficial when I'm drinking lots of fluid and eating lots of calories sure. and then getting pumped up in the gym. But then if I'm not doing those things, I deflate down to this same old size that I felt like I was trapped in forever. 
it wasn't until I started to train heavy and lift did I actually feel like the gains that I got from that were maybe not as pronounced as like a pump would be, but they stuck with me. Does yeah. that make sense? Like totally. When I started lifting heavy and, and, and training in like, you know, low rep range and really loading strength training, right? Uh, and I'd see gains on my my arms or something, my tricep. Like even when I wasn't working out, even when I wasn't pumped, I was like, oh, I could I could see definition. I can notice a difference yeah. from that. Now, when I was before that, I was training for the pump all the time, chasing that and supersetting and high reps all the time. And bam, when I was in the gym, I felt amazing. Look, I would look at myself and I was all aired up. But then about an hour later, I deflate back down, and then I felt like I didn't even look. I don't even look like I trained that. So much. you know what's funny is I read an article uh, recently that Arnold actually contributed to, and he talked about how he would always incorporate in his off season a powerlifting cycle. So a lot of people mm. don't know this, but Arnold competed and trained as a powerlifter before he competed as a bodybuilder. In fact, he had some some European records at the time. Pretty strong guy. I think his max bench press at the time was 505 or 550, which back then was still a lot of weight, but back then it was a ton of weight, right? And what he said was he noticed that when he would train this way, he would get a much denser look to his body. And I've heard other people, other bodybuilders talk about that, that the heavy training gives them this kind of granite, hard, dense look, whereas training for the pump gives you more of that bubbly kind of round look or whatever. Yeah. So both, right? They're both really I important. I 100% agree and subscribe to that. And I think that people that want to knock it, or it's the same thing like when you hear Eastern medicine and the stuff that we used to explain sounded a little woo-woo because we yeah. didn't have the right verbiage around it or mm -hmm. we hadn't put together a lot of the studies to support exactly what we're trying to convey. Mm -hmm. So I think you know bodybuilders like him have been trying to express it or explain totally. it. I've personally experienced it. I don't know how to explain it. Like I don't know how to tell somebody exactly what's happening. It makes sense to me that if you train for the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy all the time, that you train the ability for the body to hold more fluid in the right. muscle belly. Yeah. Now right? from yeah, functional perspective, like it, that in terms of like having muscle, more muscle endurance and being able to provide you know more bouts of of work uh you know that could be something that too to consider you know in terms of sarcoplasmic hyperplasia. oh yeah um you know there's a cell volumizing effect that also stimulates uh muscle protein synthesis the building of muscle creatine actually does this to some extent because creatine volumizes the causes cells. your muscles to hold a little bit more fluid that actually sends a, a small muscle building signal they all contribute to each other, so they're all important to train in. Um, but it's just interesting, you know. As I, like I said, as I was training, I could feel. You know, by the way, you know, it was a good example. Of this, this is I know this is not this is not a study because it's only one person. But like Stan Efferding, right? Stan Efferding, powerlifter turned bodybuilder, and he had to train in the higher rep ranges to get the volume of his muscles. But he always had that granite hard look. Yeah. To his body. Ben, so, Ben Pollock, same thing. Yes, right? So it's very, very interesting. So it's just one of those things. And I know uh, we tend to lean one way or the other. I don't mind pump training for the upper body. Man, for the lower body, though, it's so damn grueling. Just yeah. those reps. I just want to. Well, I think that's die. just the amount of blood that has to <laughs> leave from the heart down to your to your feet, and, and those are to walk and those are massive muscles. So it's a lot of it, right? You can get a crazy burn and pump in the bicep. But it's like how much blood yeah. does your body really need to send in that oh, direction? Yeah. Where you get a pump in the quads and the hamstrings, yeah. and it's like that's a lot. Of, it's hard to walk. Yeah, it's a lot. Totally. You got to send out. Well, yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, you know blood pump and all that stuff, so I you know you guys ever fall into the same? I'm sure you do. You just keep making the same mistake over and over again because. You don't learn your lesson, training wise or in life. Never, just everything. Yeah, <laughs> for me, for me, this is a. I'm not. This is not a life one. This is a training one. But um, so every once in a while, you guys know I have a little bit of a supplement uh, relationship. Mm. Uh, I like supplements. I like experimenting. Yeah, I have a good time with them. Uh, I went to every once in a while. I'll do this. I'll go get gas or something, and then oh, there's a supplement store. Let me just go in there. Just walk around. I like doing it. See what's going on. Mm. And I saw some of their pre-workout, ready-to-drink drinks, right? Mm -hmm. and I can't believe you're even in a supplement store with the amount of fucking <laughs> the amount supplements, of that, supplements, we supplements that we have here. We have more our supplements in this studio we have a store here. Yeah. that you could eat supplements every day, twice a day for the next year and never get through all now, of Now, what gets you what? more excited? Is it the color and the labels and the marketing? Is it the names of these crazy-ass products? Yeah, like, what is asshole. it? It's what are you chemicals. doing, dude? It's what the, the chemicals. chemicals. You just want to see what happens. Literally, 
Yes. It's, it's like, the, I'm a self-experimenter. Oh, yeah. It's the chemicals, dude. It's like, oh, this is a new combination of weird shit. And you know what's funny with pre-workouts? Ever since that market opened up, which it's how long How long would you say the pre-workout market? It's been like 15 years, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah. Before that, there was, really wasn't a pre-workout Nothing. category. Or no. Yeah. They, because the stimulants are, you, you build a tolerance to them, like caffeine, right? You drink a small cup of coffee, get you jazzed. Eventually, you need two cups and so on. The pre-workout ingredients have gradually ramped up to insane levels. The original pre-workouts had 200 milligrams of caffeine. Less than that even. I yeah. remember stuff that had 150. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's 400. 400 oh, yeah, is yeah. what you see now yeah. in some of these That's like ones. the baseline now. Dude, I got one, right? And I read the back and I'm like, oh, shit, this has... Yohimbi in it. Oh, this is tyrosine is in there. Oh, yeah. this has got agmentine. Yeah. And it's got a lot of caffeine so in there. Nuclear fallout. Yeah. So, is that the so, name or, so, yeah. It, so I don't know if you can I want to make my balls today when I'm podcasting. Dude. That sounds like a great well, idea. I'm like, my eyeballs are sweating. That's what happened. I, I was, I overdid it, dude. I was working out and I was like, I you can feel the, my heart beating. You know what I also find <laughs> ironic about that dude? is you're the, you're the biggest cheap ass out of all of us and that we have, <laughs> you would go waste money on a product that you have for free, yeah, which this, is, this is funny true. to me too. It's not a waste. It's a valid point. It's an experience. Oh my I overdid it, bro. Oh my Every hey, I have time. I have something I want to show you. Doug, can you point? I sent you uh, privately a video. This happened. Make sure you pick the right video he sent you privately. Yeah. This happened. It's not just, the first one he. This he happened sent just you. the other day on the plane. Did you guys hear about this story right here? Oh, uh, I think I saw. So I think I saw this. Play it. No, I know Doug hates this when we play it. stuff. Hold so on a second. I want, you to, I want you to see the whole thing. What happens? Another angry. Blow it up. Oh too. shit! Yeah, watch a person. passenger. Can I read it, Adam? You yeah, mind? yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So a passenger allegedly touched two flight attendants' breasts. Then screamed his parents are worth two million before punching a flight. First of all, you're worth two million is nothing. You're, you're then punching a flight attendant and sus the suspended the crew. For, wait, hold on a second. The crew duct taped him? Yes. Oh, Just wait till you see this. Wow, That's why dude. I want you guys to watch this. I My parents are worth two million. You guys fucking suck. My parents are worth more than fucking two million goddamn Chad you lost his mind. Wow, dude. Hey, he even has the pastel polo on. <laughs> My grandma is like $50,000. My dad's a lawyer. Shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's... Oh. Bro. That's sad. Ah, oh, my <laughs> taped yes, his shit. Yes. <laughs> Bro, he, he taped his face, his face dude. Oh, uh, wait, did he die? No, he didn't die. He can breathe. Yeah. Wow. So okay. So, I mean, taking matters in what kind of um, authority do they have to duct tape somebody? So they, they have a lot of authority. So yeah. they to, to maintain the safety if they're in the air. Yeah. No, I get that. I'm just I'm curious as to like protocol. With yeah. That. So they're they're right now they're on a leave of absence. Um, and the first statement that came out said they were suspended. Now the now Frontier, I think is the name of the plan or they whatever. They, raise, they came back out sure. again and said that because it, people started freaking out, like that they they weren't supporting their employees for what they did. Like yeah. I mean, they, they they a lot of people feel that they they did what they could or they did the right thing. Then you have some people that are like, okay, they took this too far. They humiliated him by duct taping his face and stuff like that. I mean, that's pretty. He fucking... humiliated himself. Well, yeah, I mean, agreed, right? Yeah. So, I so there, I, there's a there's some controversy here. There's this controversy around did they go too far with it, or, or you know, they don't have they don't have handcuffs. They don't have things that's like that. Ridiculous. There's no there was no air marshal that was on the no, plane. No, they didn't go too far. That's ridiculous. You know what would have been too far if they like beat the shit out of him after he stopped fighting back. Like that yeah. might have been a little too far. They duct taped him. He was acting yeah. like a like a moron. And he, it said in the comment or the, the the clip or whatever that he was touching female. Uh, I think they counted that him like when they he was reaching or swinging at them mm. like that was. the- I wonder if he was. You know what though? This yeah. What kid, if he had Tourette's oh, or what if he? Well, what no, if, that seemed he, like he might have had a little bit of. He was drunk or something. Like he didn't seem like he was in the right state of mind. That's well, imagine sure. though. Imagine if he's he's been diagnosed bipolar and has oh, Tourette's. Right. Yeah. And then they did something like that. He's right? off his meds. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, dude. You guys ever deal with anything like that at the gym where you had to like <sighs> something uh, like yeah. that? Not uh, like that. Well, I don't know. I, I did not at the gym, but you have? Yeah. yeah. I told you guys a story. There was the, the Oh, the, you tricked him to walk outside, then you yeah, walked him out. The big oh, yeah, biker dude, and he was I mean, he was gonna fight me, dude. And so I had to like I had to think fast and I was like, All right, I'll fight you. 
let's go outside. Meet me outside, right? And and so he's like, yeah. So then I opened the door for him to go out. Yeah. And he's like, and he walked out, and then I just locked it right behind him. And he looked at me through the glass, and I waved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we called the police. But that, I mean, I, I mean, that, I've had, like I said, in that situation, you have to think kind of quickly. Like, what? Are I, don't, I mean, do? I think that was a, a pretty smart maneuver, the, right yeah. there. Yeah. I don't think yeah. I, I don't think I've had somebody that. I'm trying to think. You if mobilize them right away. Uh, you kind of quell all this like crazy energy. Yeah. yeah I don't think I've had. Some, I mean, I had. I mean, I told you this story where the guy spit in my face, but I mean that didn't end well mm. for him. Yeah. yeah. So that was. <laughs> you overreacted. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't like walk him out the door. <laughs> so, yeah. And I don't think I overreacted. I think you spit in someone's face, you get a fucking fist to the face. That's, that's yeah. just. That's what they're asking for. To me, yeah. that is up there with like. That's yeah, biological warfare, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, know what he's got. Ultimate yeah, right? disrespect. Just, there's certain there's certain things that uh, yelling at me, calling me names. I yeah. mean, whatever. Like that's not a big deal. No, to me. No, I mean, I was you... at a concert and there's this guy, this big dude that was in one of the the pits, and we saw him throwing girls down. And so you know, myself, like and a like, mosh pit, you mean? Yeah, oh. but like he was being a total dick, and and was like, and so we all took him out. You know, like it took a few of us, but we targeted him. <laughs> I like how this guy justifies his fucking bar fighting all the time. Yeah, so that, I'm just saying, he, we saw him hit girls, and that was not okay. You I'm know sure, what? I'm I've, sure that's how that went. Down. So I've I've heard this. So I had a friend that was like you, Justin. He loved going to those kind of concerts. You get in a mosh pit. Yeah, and I would ask him, I'm like, dude. Are you? Do you just There's rules? Dude. Yes. Yeah. I had There's no unsaid idea. code. Yeah. Yes, because I'm like, why would I do that? You're just getting a mod. You're just fighting people swinging. He's like, no, no, no. There's a code, and there's ways you do it. Yeah, you don't like, actually get in fights unless you're an asshole. And he said, he said that if you break the code in the mosh pit, you're dead. Like yeah. if you go in we'll, there we'll, the, and you're intentionally, turn on you. yeah, yeah, then everybody ends up turning on that guy. Everybody yeah. will yeah. turn yeah. on. And that's what happened. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> it's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. Speaking of funny stuff, so uh, I I met uh, one of our our neighbors and. Um, He's a he's a spittle in the corner of your mouth person. You guys know what I'm talking about. You what ever is, meet someone like that? A what? Like a little dribble, right? You ever meet like, someone like that as they talk? A little bit of like a just, little bit of foams a little up bit a little of spittle bit. gathers in the corners of their mouth, oh, and they wow, don't know, yeah, and yeah. they just keep talking. You ever meet that before? Yeah, yeah. Starts oh, bubbling a little bit. That's the worst, dude. Yeah. Because you supposed to tell them like they have food on their face. Oh. Is that the same thing? Like, hey, you know you're drooling, right? When you're it talking. doesn't yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's I've met several people like this, and it just happens every time they talk. Is it a condition? Is, is it he a close talker too? On top of that, no. Thank oh, God. Wow, that would be the combo. No, is is that a condition? I'm sure there's got to be. That's got. What would you call it? I don't have no idea. I don't know. I mean, there's got to be something going on mechanically with him Garbage. right his tongue's not working properly and and so then he gets this build up right oh, yeah. Yeah. don't you think I, you might be right dude. i i gotta be right yeah. here don't you think that i had a teacher I, like i've that. had people that I've, I've seen and talked to before very rare you see it but i have seen a handful of people in my yeah, life they just keep going and it's right there yeah and it doesn't go away yeah it gets all hmm. filled up right yeah in. dude yeah. and i'm like oh yeah, they, man they do that every once in a while. <laughs> he's one of those guys this yeah i bet they have suck. something going on with their you know they got lazy tongue part lizard they got sleepy butt something. syndrome there's like a sleepy tongue Syndrome. He was talking okay. I mean, his words were pronounced right. It just said the corner, you know. Like, really? Because yeah. I think I remember that that person having kind of a lisp too. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, that's fucked up, dude. Uh, you got spittle and a lisp. Yeah. Sp is that a thing? Spittle? Is that is you got that a lot right? Things to overcome. Doug knows this. <clears throat> Why do I know this? I don't know. <laughs> He's like, I did like, a girl. I did a all the terms. <laughs> yeah. Doug, yeah. Look up they call spittle. it uh, hyper salivation. Oh, okay. Uh, really? Uh, Some people get like excess saliva in their mouth. Uh, spittle. I don't know if that's the exact word. I think of spittle as like coming out of your mouth, uh, like yeah. a spit. No, that's, that's gleek. You know? Gleek. What is that called? Yeah. When uh, gleek? Gleek? I don't know, but I've seen those little bugs. Yeah. You know that they cover themselves with spit. And have you seen those in nature? No. Spit bugs. No. Yeah, those. Yeah, it's like a little defense mechanism, and they cover. Huh? The, you see just these little, you know, spit piles. Really? Yeah. It's Where's like a this? little bug. I don't know. It's, I've seen it in nature. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those. Things. I have no idea. Speaking of that, so did you guys actually watch? I haven't uh, watched it. Fantastic Fun Guy. I'm, uh, I'm, no. You know what yeah. I have? Don't ruin it too My much guy, of it because I'm gonna Paul watch. Stamets. Hold on a second. The bug is called a spittle bug. Yeah. I wow. Told you. See. You know what's funny is that we merge brains there on accident. That was I really know. good. So maybe he's got one of those bugs the only in his uh, face. Stop. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> so tell me about this. Uh, okay. So tell me why you texted us the other night. To tell us to eat an edible and watch this show. Because is it is mind-blowing. All right. Yeah, it's mind-blowing. Uh, there's just so much progress. I think that we've gotten away from like really cool stuff in media because it's all negative and everybody <laughs> thinks the apocalypse is happening. 
But at the same time, you get somebody like it, I guess they classify him as like an amateur scientist researcher, uh, which uh, I mean, some people are touting him as like like the next like Darwin because of some of these breakthroughs he's found with mushrooms. Really? Yeah, and fungi and uh, and mycelium in, in general. And so he was able to patent a few. Uh, just not to like go too far in depth with this because you guys need to watch this. But yeah. there's just a few things that I was just like mind blown about. Uh, and one of them was. Uh, basically what he figured out with how to uh, exterminate uh, certain pests like termites, for instance. So uh, basically, long story short, there's mycelium that um, some of the termites will walk over. And when they come back to the colony, these the, the guard uh, termites will recognize this this fungus that's on on their legs and will basically usher them out of the colony decapitate them and then will commit suicide themselves so it protects the colony oh that's right? extreme and so i'm at, and so he's paul this guy that, that's uh you know you know discovering all this uh was able to come up with a, a different type of mycelium that actually attracted the um uh the termites and so they would in a sense they would go walk over this bring it back in and then go all the way it would reach all the way to the queen and this would de like basically just like devour the entire colony, and so and it was so successful. You don't even need pesticides wow, anymore. Wow, that's brilliant! And 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 he's been able to prove this in, in other like even with mosquitoes, even with like other types of pests that there's there's very unique uh, types of mycelium that they can create, you know, in the lab to to address like each one of these like pest problems Dude, fungi is fascinating yeah. I, I, that's actually a, a very the largest organism on earth is a mushroom Did you yeah know that? and it's massive all, where it, is it isn't it's it it's in oregon too? isn't it the oldest the old too? growth uh, it's huge it's yeah. under i think it's underground it's underground it's massive apparently i don't know if so this whole like like neural network of they yeah. communicate yeah. through chemicals and things so that we don't trees transfer like nutrients to each other through the mycelium mm -hmm. and so you know it's all interconnected my favorite are how some of these mushrooms will actually infect an animal like an insect and take over the insect's behavior mm -hmm. and make the insect walk up to the top of a tree and position itself so that a bird eats it. Yeah. So it's like committing suicide. So the bird eats it, poops out the mushroom, and it goes to another, and it's like this life cycle. Well, here's here's another mind-blowing thing, right? So they've, you know how you mentioned the trees, how they communicate and everything? Yeah. Well, they've been able to like research even further into that. And they found really interesting behaviors that uh, they didn't think was possible before. But basically, the trees recognize siblings. So they understand that their group, like they have actual, like a family, uh, you know, uh, within the, this, this, this tree family circle. Tree yeah. So, so they, they, <laughs> they take tree, no. nutrients and, and gather things and they, they provide it to their specific uh, siblings and uh, take care of their family. There's so much we don't know. It's like, what? You ever, see, you <laughs> yeah. ever seen those pictures from the ground up? So they'll take a picture of like the canopy and trees will, they'll prevent themselves from crowding each other out. And so they'll create these spaces in between their leaves, like they're communicating to each other to give each other space yeah. to get more sun. Have you seen these, mm -hmm. these canopies where they do this? I have seen that. It's crazy. really weird. I really want to watch that though. So don't, don't keep yeah, sharing all right. I won't keep going. There's a lot some, more, but uh, don't give if you guys don't secrets. watch it. I'll just yeah. keep well, going. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to, because I'm definitely going to get high and watch that. I think that'll be a fun one to watch. <laughs> yeah. or just, I've been, uh, I've been training a little just bit. Do, just yeah. do that. If everything yeah. is better that way. I was watching the one you recommended not that long ago, The Heist. Oh yeah, it's that's really good. so. So you were saying it's like a series, and it talks. So about it's a docu. It's docu series, like mini docu. I don't know. Is, there, is that the right name for you that mini docu series? Yeah, or just docu series, right? Where they have well, because there's multiple, right? right yeah. So it's there's not just like two not, episodes yeah. for each one of the stories. That's right. So yeah. there's like I don't know six stories, and they're all two episodes long, and they're all successful heists that are famous. Where they got away? Yeah. yeah. Do they have the one where the guy jumped out of the plane never found again? Oh, uh, no. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. What's his name? I've only watched Loki. Three. They 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 had that in Loki. Yeah, what's his name? It's like D.B. something. Yeah, D. Cooper. B. Cooper. Yeah, yes. dude. And, what was yeah. that one? You never heard about D.B. Cooper? The guy dropped out of a plane? Bro, Tell he me. took a bag uh, of money that, okay. he, that he robbed, I don't know how many millions of dollars, and parachuted out of a plane and never- Nobody's ever found him. Never found again. 
Still. Yeah. And they, Still. Yeah. Look him up. Look at his picture. His picture's got, he's got like sunglasses on and his famous sketch. You've never heard of D.B. Cooper? No. Oh, bro. He's one of the when, most. When was it? How, how far back? Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, 90s? 70s, I think. Oh, God. That far back? Of course, yeah. I don't remember that. Of course. Yeah. What, what do you mean? Why would I remember that? Uh, no, I said, I don't. Oh, of oh, course, yeah. I don't oh, yeah. remember that. That's him right there, dude. Yeah. So that guy right there stole. How much, do they say how much money he got away with, Doug? Two hundred thousand oh. dollars. So these oh. ones are all famous for they're the biggest heist ever too. So yeah. seven million, three million. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think like ten million in booze on one of them. Like there was some really cool heist and uh, just I don't know. I think it's interesting to listen to clever stories. I think I've shared on the podcast before that the robberies get a, they get away with robberies actually way more than than the news leads but on. They don't it was let interesting you know. the one with the the airplane heist where they have like all this money in excess that they're yeah. you know sort of they have like a, a like a warehouse with it and they don't even have guards or anything protecting like the money and so this guy finds this and basically does his homework from watching all of these like CSI type shows. Yes. And like 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 FBI shows and like how they actually like uh, find these people. So he's basically like just taking all the information down and like planning and plotting his whole strategy. And, and he gets away. And he gets away. You know, that's wow. why. So I, I think I've talked about this too on the show a long time ago when I first was talking about The Wire. Originally, when The Wire was launched, it got removed from television because it laid the blueprints out on how to beat these cases. Really? Yeah, because they, I mean, that was before, everybody knows what a burner phone is now, Yeah, but that's what made it popular. Nobody knew what it was before that. Nobody was- uh, Oh, that's interesting. It's like common knowledge now, right? Like, oh, a burner phone. Like, everybody kind of knows what that is, but back then, nobody knew what it was. Well, I know the movie yeah. Goodfellas, if I'm not mistaken, that they, they almost, they got threatened- but putting it out because it was showing too much of, of the inner workings. Yeah, that's how Wet Wire was. I mean, they basically show how the drug dealers avoid getting caught up wow. and how they structure. Now, is this all on Netflix? Um, I don't know if- the Heist uh, is on Netflix. Heist is on Netflix? Uh, yeah. yeah. So you know what else they just put on Netflix? Hmm. Super exciting. The Twilight series. Oh yeah! Wait. So as you guys in, haven't seen it, right? The, the, Number, the chick Twi vampire are you one. About the That's vampire. The one. Yeah, I thought it was a Twilight Zone. I got excited, yeah. and then I didn't. No, yeah. immediately. No, it's on. It's on there it's now. A glitter vampires, it's, dude. It's, no thanks. It's ranking right. It's ranking real high because there's so many. Because there's a lot of teenagers that watch Netflix. Yes. Well, so so I've been watching them with Jessica. Right. So we're watching the whole series. <laughs> Come on, bro. Hey, listen, listen, bro. <laughs> everybody, calm yeah, down. Yeah, you're on. Okay, one more strike, you lose your man card. Okay, but which team are you on? India, while you're working out. Hey. The hold werewolf on. guy. Hey, hey, hold on with a the second. No shirt, India, while you work out, the... Twilight. One Vampire. more, dude. Hey, purple's your favorite color. One yeah. more. Hey, we'll talk One about more. that for a second. One yeah. more. Purple's yeah. royalty. No, I, I, I. So I watched it with mm. her because I think they're fun. We talk shit the whole time as we're watching it. So we're actually having a good time. <laughs> Those movies are so, if you watch... They're so dumb. No, no, no. Yeah. So as I'm watching it, so here's... I've, I have watched it. Here's something that nobody really talked about, right? So Edward, the freaking vampire... <laughs> okay, so oh, there's lots of people Edward? talking no, 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 about no, no, it. They're no, just no, no, between no. the ages of 15 and 19. Come Relax. out with it, dude. Everybody calm down. Just hold on a second. I got to tell you something. In the movie, he's a 109-year-old vampire, right? He fucking falls in love with a minor, a 17-year-old girl, and then he marries her. Wow. Do they not know he's 109? He's a freaking he's a he's a pervert. He's a freaking. What are you doing with this kid? Anyway, pedophile. That's all I want to say. <laughs> wow. As I'm watching, I'm like, what the hell? That's hell's a whole going new on angle. Here? I didn't this even is consider. A exactly. This is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of plum, which is a rad color, by the way, some of the best muscle cars of all time were plum color. What's the one that I that I love yeah, so much? Barracudas or uh, Challengers there you go. or yeah. Doesn't uh, isn't uh, Viore have a, their new collection coming? Yeah, out? Yeah, the whole fall thing. They're highlighting plum meta? is a big color. That's a, so I brought up last time the meta pants. Right, so that was yeah. part of the, the fall collection. I do know they've introduced more colors. I've had they've had the plum for a while because okay. I have the Sunday joggers in plum also. I have the Sunday joggers in plum, brown, white, three blacks, two grays. Yeah, so those are my favorite. I'm still trying to get that one army green jacket that they had at the location in uh, Santana Road. I haven't seen oh, that on the that. web. Have you, have you seen, seen on the website? I got it. It's a, you did. No, what? not on the website. When we did the event, I took one. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, I did. You, you I, took the last size I, I was I did. For. I, I didn't did. know you got that. Yeah, it's really oh, cool. Oh, I haven't seen such you. such a rad jacket. I, I love it. you wear it. Absolutely yeah. love it. So you guys know that, that in the past, purple was royalty because it was you could not find in nature, it was very rare and hard to find purple dye. Mm. There was a particular type of mollusk, which is uh, like a snail, that produced this purple dye. It was very hard to find, and it was punishable so by death. you're not going to get it from grapes? No. Mm. No, you, you can't. There's very, very hard to find real purple dye in nature. Mm -hmm. But again, there was this mollusk that produced this purple dye when you did something with it, and it was punishable by death 
to collect these mollusks because they were so hard to get and make purple. So kings and queens wore purple. It's and a, now it's on your underwear. <laughs> now it's on my underwear. Yeah. To, yeah. 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 It's, it's always interesting to listen yeah. to you navigate through your bullshit. <laughs> <You're> saying, <laughs> somehow I'm going to justify. Somehow, some way, somehow I'm going to justify watching a teeny here. bopper freaking right. movie. And, and, and then I'm going to justify the color purple and why I and love it so much. Bopper Team Edward. Work? Does anybody use that anymore? Is that yeah, like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's still <laughs> a thing. I feel yeah. like you're 85 they're years the, old. They're the ones that are fucking up the net the net. Netflix algorithm I with the know. most watched. I remember the first time I got all excited about them. Like, oh look, at these are all trending. These must be good. So, I think like the three of the top four were just like, this is appealed. This wasn't is definitely one of their appealed. powers. Like, I can hear everybody's thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's okay. Let's let's be honest. Like, they're whoa, they're the dude, dumbest. What a cool power. They're, yeah, they're they're the dumbest vampire. Like I I grew up watching uh, what's it called? Uh, what was the one that we watched? Brand Lost Boys. Joker? No, Lost oh, Boys. yeah, Lost Boys. That's awesome. a vampire, bro. Yeah. They bite yeah, your Lost head Boys open. Well, I think it doesn't like so. Uh, Twilight falls in the category of and why I said teeny bopper it's like there's like a formula right to movies to it's make a them, love story yeah right it's a love like story a wrapped love story. into high school drama yes like yes. I mean there's a hundred different ways to tell that story you and know, they all go popular do you know why girls in particular are infatuated with vampires I actually read Jessica read this what book did Is she read the neck sucking no uh, <laughs> I don't know I'm just you just know, like, speculating just is like I got this move <laughs> like <laughs> girls love it yeah. no or how, or so how well really dressed the men that. are no so there's this book I can't remember the book but it talks about why they want to keep guessing why there's yeah. certain things that are found to track it's because a vampire they're pale no a yeah. vampire's How about that? is looks <laughs> wow well, looks I'm relatively just, young sorry that's creepy you know obviously relatively young could kill you dangerous but isn't very protective but is also so they look young but they have the wisdom of an old man so it's like it's this contrast like oh my god he's like he looks like me he's a teenager but he's so wise which made the perfect formula for something like Twilight things. to go huge right? yes because young that's, good looking but wise th that's like the formula mm, yeah. that's what girls want at that age right I want a guy that's and you know, chill because he's got hundreds of years you know exactly <laughs> to, to exactly he wants. isn't that interesting how we do that? Yeah. anyway speaking of <laughs> speaking of this kind of stuff uh, so do you guys know Rihanna is a billionaire officially. Oh, she reached a billion. A billion. There's only a, okay. So you have Dre. You have. I. I don't think uh, has Jay Z hit it yet. Jay Z um, had to. No. I no. I don't think he uh, has yet. Maybe though. I don't know. I'm not. He I'm had not, like a vodka and everything. I thought that. I, he, I know he was chasing it. Do you know Andrew? I feel like you're up and up on that hip hop scene. <clears throat> yeah. No, you're not. What about not Puff so Daddy. Yeah. Huh? No. P Diddy. One point four billion. Who's is that? Jay Z. Okay, so he is. So now Jay Z. How does he make his money? Producing. Jay -Z. Oh, bro, he's got his he's got clothing line. He's got cologne, champagne. I mean, he's got a ton of things, right? So you have. Is he is he is he behind the 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 champagne? Is it the spade the Ace of Spade one? It's called Armand oh, de no. Brignac. Yeah, close enough. That's my What's best it? French can pronunciation. Picture, can I see a picture? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Can you show it to me or yes. no? Yes, yeah. I will. So you have okay. So you have uh, you have Dre. You have Jay Z. I'm sure P Diddy is now too. Then you have Rihanna. There's not that wow. One point four billion. Wow. Where's what about, the uh, what about Kanye? Oh, you just you don't have a picture of it, Doug. That's what I was, I was looking for. A picture. Yeah, I'll, I'll find it for oh, you. Okay, Doug, Doug um, if you want to look up images, is, Ka type is Kanye in up there yet? Too is Kanye up there? Kanye Hold might on. be close. Yeah, you know, it's it's think. actually I think it's really cool because we've we've watched this happen in the last, and this is uh this is true with uh, professional athletes. Wow, with, look at the champagne bottle. That's it. That is oh, the one. Wow. So yeah. I was. Uh, that's what I said. Wow, yeah. five or six hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah, for one bottle. Look yeah. at that. That's yeah. crazy. Um, how do you know this was his was? Uh, th but no, the last. I don't know, two two decades or so, I would say. Like this is now a lot of your professional athletes, your rappers, your movie stars, like to you can build with social media now, you can build a personal brand and build so much off of that where you mm -hmm. couldn't really do that before. You, you know, were at the mercy of, you know, agents and other companies, I was just sponsors. Gonna, I was just gonna say what you'll notice about all these artists is they did not become billionaires off of music. No, no. They become billionaires, they make their money in their name, yeah. in their art. Then they take that, they parlay it into some they other business. Partner up with tech and Yeah. Know, so like Rihanna's got she has a uh a, a, a beauty line called Fenty Beauty Line, and this is how She's become a billionaire, uh, which is I look. I I love this. I think like the this Kardashians, is, right? Yeah, they no, it's cool. Too. I think this is so brilliant. You st aren't athletes? Some pro athletes starting to do this too. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's, they all. Everyone is. I remember when um, my buddy Wynn, He's been on the show before. Who's a sports agent? 
when uh, we first kind of were hanging out and first met, he was introducing me to his pro athletes that he had that were football players. And he wanted to use me as an example. Because at that time, I had, I don't know, I think I only had like 10,000 followers, but I was building my own quote unquote brand. So this was before right. Mind Pump, and I was building a presence on social media. That's when you were doing the half naked photos. Yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. whatever it took, right? So. <laughs> Whatever it took. <laughs> I just breeze over that real quick. <laughs> I'll do anything. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Well, that's a long night. You got money? Yeah. I'll do it. But dirty, dirty so clothes. now these agents, like that became a big part of his job is actually to help. Uh, so, you know, it's like, hey, I'm going to negotiate your contract, get the most money for you, and also help you build your personal brand. That's great. So that's part of most good sport uh, sport agents now is they don't just negotiate your contract. They also can help you in this department. I imagine some of the bigger agencies and bigger ones even have literally probably departments that help some of these guys and girls with the, with building it. And, okay, so you just reminded me, you're talking about professional sports. Wasn't there an article about the 49ers using or utilizing Juve for yeah. recovery? Probably. Yeah. So what were they saying in there specifically? If that was part of their recovery protocol? I think they have a I think I think I saw on their website that it says that they had they had like the competitive advantage because they have it, which I'm sure is like a an article from from Juve for them yeah. to to post on there. Well, I mean I mean I'm sure other teams can buy Juve and use it too. Yeah. I don't you know, that's a good question on what happens when you sign with a pro team like that. Is it exclusive? It, yeah, it must be, I would think. I don't know. I don't know if they, I mean you as if you're Juve, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Because you're, I mean, you're talking about passing on. Do you I, know? Do you know, Doug? If well, that's specifically the practice? brand, because they're highlighting that Juve was the best option out there that they researched and everything, and so it's like it was cool. Because I remember when this happened, like I don't know, it was a year ago, where they announced that they were like moving into their training facility and yeah. like adding these panels for recovery, and so they're putting a lot of emphasis on recovery, which is really smart. And I'm, I was stoked to see them them go that direction. I wish I could share with the audience. Uh, everyone who's using juve but i can't like so when we when i talk to them oh yeah they yeah. share with me and they're technically not supposed to right because for the same reason why i can't share and talk about it but there's a lot of very big name uh pro athletes and all kinds of sports that are using it to get the competitive there's a, okay so there's a lot more that goes into red light therapy than just having the red yeah. light panels there's, which is all this where all the charlatans come in there is there's intensity direction of the rays and how it's used and worked and juve is like literally what they'll use in studies when you see red light therapy studies you're you're looking at the way juve works other red light panels don't do that now they may emit the same red light but it's not nearly as effective until this day it still weirds me out it's the strangest thing like uh, jessica i can clearly see in her face when she uses it on a regular basis it's remarkable how much it changes now the thing that i can't quite wrap my brain around cuz i don't fully grasp the science behind it is that is it because um, and why we're seeing these huge benefits and why I think it's helping so many people is because of how little sunlight we get and many of the benefits that you get from the juve light are similar to the benefits that you get, would get from sun. It's more like this. I know it's concentrated, so I know it's like a higher dose of it. I'll give right? you a good example. Um, creatine, tremendous benefits for building muscle, strength, performance, also naturally found in animal proteins, especially red meat. Now, the problem with trying to get the upper limits of creatine, because our muscles can actually store quite a bit of creatine. This is why they do the loading phase and all that stuff, right? The problem with trying to eat enough animal sources of creatine to get creatine is it always is accompanied by proteins, fats, and calories, yeah. right? And in order to get the upper limit of creatine that's going to saturate your muscles, it, it can be a bit unrealistic for most people to get it from food. Right. Okay. Do you get some of those red light rays from the sun? Yes, but you also get other rays from the sun that can cause skin damage, sunburn, and you have to be out in the sun very consistently. Right. More, more radiation to consider. Yeah, so with this, it's concentrated with this particular wavelength of light that doesn't cause this kind of damage, but produces these positive effects. So the benefits, can you get some of the benefits Fits from sun that you get from red light, yes. Can you get all the benefits? No. No. That, that, Isn't that, that, I mean, it's crazy. Well, that's my point, though, is I, I feel like the, the people that would see the most extreme benefits. So let's say you're somebody who lives down by Muscle Beach, and your routine is you train and you go lay out on the beach right. every single day for an hour afterwards compared to 
CEO over here in Silicon Valley who, you know, works 5 to 11 p.m., you know, every night, you know, burning the candle at both ends underneath fluorescent lights all day. And I were to compare those two bodies and then I would introduce the juve light three times a week to them. My theory is that the the CEO is going to see the most dramatic benefits from that. Probably. I, I would assume so. Just like if you were to compare a vegan to somebody who eats red meat occasionally yeah. and then creatine. Very good point. If you were to take a vegan and give them creatine, you're going to see cognitive benefits, muscle build, energy, all these things come yeah. to them. Where maybe this person who diets and eats lots of red meat... Oh yeah, I feel a difference. It helps, but not as dramatic as the. Yeah, vegan. no, that's that's a very very good point. I would have to agree with you. That's, I would definitely have to agree with you. So well, it's also consistency too. You know, in terms of like the frequency of using it, you start to feel those effects, right? So in terms of like being able to consistently have, you know, a contained light source that gives you those benefits versus like you know the sun on this day. You know, like I, I just don't feel like people consistently get that kind of exposure. No, I yeah. totally. I mean, that to me, that's kind of how I've trained myself to use it is you know it, at the bare minimum right if i don't get out on the sun i'm definitely that's a day i'm going to get in front of the juve every mm -hmm. day i'll try and spend 10 to 15 minutes in there right. uh, in front of it if i can let's switch it on is in the office is where we have it but for sure if i know it's like oh my god today i'm like racking my brain i really was not outside and get a walk mm -hmm. in the sun or anything like mm -hmm. that like that's i'm for sure going to get over there and get 20 yeah minutes speaking of, of uh, football and stuff uh, any updates on your your team that you're coaching so we're in hell week uh, this week oh, oh this is hell week, is wow. hell week yeah. are you going in the morning uh so no the double days is next week so hell week is different it's all the like hell's pure those... conditioning like it's oh so hell week always for us was also double days too oh, okay. so it's it no, was we do it separate yeah it's like, <laughs> this was like wow. two, two hell With two shitty weeks hell week and then freaking I mean, Satan's it's asshole intense week. <laughs> it's football yeah, you know, yeah that's so, okay so what so what well, Cons he, yeah, what constituted is. I was going to say think. this. Th let me add to that. Let okay. me explain this to somebody who might not understand. So, what is the purpose of Hell Week? What are you trying to train? Honestly, there's no there's no individual work. It's just literally just conditioning. So it's almost like because the the practices um, during, during the summer are optional. You you kind of use this week as a as a get gauge. everybody back in. Yeah, you get shape. back everybody that that has been gone and vacationing or whatever like everybody's got to get uh you know up to speed with everybody else that's actually been consistent so um it, it's kind of like a last minute effort to get everybody sort of like in game conditioning uh speed and so we're we're just kind of throwing the kitchen sink at them and again this is like this is mindset so i, I look at this as an opportunity to um really drive the point home that we don't have quit in us. And so when you're fatigued on the field, this is where you got to fight through all those factors. And okay. it's a totally different mentality than what I preach here on the show about, you know, longevity and, and sustainability and all that. This is a sport. So you're saying conditioning, uh, this is also, this is a lot of it mental conditioning. Yes. So you're teaching them, and, there, and this is important to, to discern because I think sometimes people, or even ex-athletes, I've had this happen where I'll have somebody I train and now they're 30, but they played football before. And they're like, but I used to throw up after my workouts, especially during double days and hell week. And, that, right. and I would explain to them, that wasn't necessarily to train your body to make it more fit. It's That was to train your mind to deal with that kind of grueling. Because mm -hmm. when you're in a game with the team, sometimes the difference between you winning and losing isn't your physical fitness, but rather which team is going to give up mentally first because that shit sucks. Although the the cardiovascular adaptation that happens in that short period of time is actually unbelievable. In yeah. fact, as a kid, I thought it was all bullshit. I didn't realize the science until I became a trainer way later mm -hmm. on actually how effective that is. I always thought, oh, this is a way for the coaches to punish you for being lazy over the summer. Yeah, yeah it feels and like punishment. Yeah, it does feel like that. When you're a kid going through it, you think this is it is mostly mental just to perceive all break and two, to kind of get at me for being lazy and drinking Slurpees all fucking summer and not exercising at all. <laughs> yeah. And this is our time to like whip you back into shape. But actually, your body adapts to cardiovascular very training very quickly. Yeah. I mean, Especially at that age. And, and if you're tremendous. doing it twice in a day and running that much for that long, it's like in a week's time, your cardiovascular endurance compared to what it was seven days ago is dramatically different. It's unbelievable how fast you can push the VO2 mm. max. Yeah, so up. I'm in sort of a weird place because the kids know I'm really, you know, my background in terms of like, you know, workouts and 
uh, mobility and I'm always stressing all these things and like, you know, paying attention to their diet, making sure they're well fed, like, you know, and, and eating uh, like two hours before they come to this practice because you saw the very first practice, like kids made the mistake of like, you know, 20 minutes before, like, you know, scarfing something down oh. and then it's just coming out, you know? Uh, and so like between that and then also like adding, you know, so, some, some sodium into their water, you know, to kind of avoid a lot of the cramping and all these types of issues. And so I've been talking to them a bit about element T and, you know, adding that in. And so I have a lot of kids that actually a boy, doing that. Pedal our drugs which to them, is, dude. <laughs> which is helpful yeah very helpful for some of these kids uh so you know there's a lot of stuff but it's but again it's like and we stress that it's like this isn't punishment this is preparation this is preparation to be able to go th all four quarters uh you know fully conditioned and be able to give 100 percent each down and so it, the whole thing is like you pay attention to those little things who doesn't finish all the way through you know, is that your the same effort you gave the very first rep uh, to the very last rep and everything in between? And so it's like all those little things, you know, you just got to get in the mindset of that because, we, you know, if the kid's like, you know, it's so easy to take plays off. It's so easy to coast, you yeah. know, and, and, and so that's what we're looking for that. We're looking to prune all the, that kind of stuff. Now, you, you told me at one point you had the, guy, the guys do uh, bear crawls for 100 yards. Yes, yeah, so that was <laughs> wow, that was my dude. idea. Uh, uh, and um yeah, it was great across the field. Dude. Oh my god! And so again, this is this is intense, dude. This is hard. Like I'm, I'm like, okay, what's going to be uh, something that they can do physically, but it's going to be really challenging. And so they are already been doing these liners and sprints and stuff. And so we kind of finished with with a hundred yard bear crawl, which is doable the first fifty yards. Like everybody gets through that pretty easily, and then all of a sudden after fifty yards, it's. Uh, yeah. Everybody's just, <laughs> just dropping like flies. So what's the mix look like? Uh, you Because you have freshmen, sophomore, junior, and seniors. Uh, how many total do you have, and what's the mix of, of each age group does it look like? Yeah, so we it's pretty light on the seniors, so we don't have that many seniors coming back. So there's you know a few leaders out there. which we, Less than 10? Yeah, it's less than 10. It's oh, probably wow. like eight or so that, okay. that are – you know, confirmed. We're still kind of in the recruiting phase. Uh, but yeah, we have more juniors and uh, the majority actually of the kids are in the sophomore and freshman class kind of coming up. So we're in a predicament where we're actually, tr we're coaching everybody at the same time. We're running practices until we can farm more coaches to help with the JVs. Now, is there, for you, is there a, a very clear difference between the freshmen sophomores to oh, the yeah. junior seniors as far as like mindset and like they're willing to work harder they're and, just deer in headlights yeah you know, they're, they're out there just like oh my god what are we doing today you know and like <laughs> i had to get pads today like uh, like they just they don't know anything like it's like they got dropped off and they're just walking around like this you know and so i'm just i'm focusing on them to help you know kind of i can't imagine you steer like them around. welcome to hell week <laughs> i can't imagine you seeing that and then going like okay i need to organize all these knuckleheads and move them in the same direction to go after it's a lot, and dude, crush it's people chaos. and win. Like, yes. You that's got to be so scary. You know what you know? this makes it's me like, think? It's like getting ready to go to battle and dude's like showing up like, where's my sword? Have you you know what it reminds sword? me of? I don't know. It, you I ever, forgot my helmet. You ever watch the Kevin Costner or Robin Hood? Yes. Where yeah. he, he's like trying to teach all the, the commoners yes. how to like shoot an arrow and they're like, oh, doink. Yeah. And like shooting it. Like, that's kind of what it's So like. you know what this makes me think of? So I noticed this as a trainer when I would have clients that would do these absurd workout classes later on crossfit came out on the scene and they would do absurd workout classes something this is a psychological phenomenon that i think coaches either do consciously or subconsciously but when you have a group of people that endure some terrible pain together it brings them together oh no yes. that's they they that's 100%. intent they 100%. That's like a well-known Are you coach, noticing that? That's a well-known coaching yeah. strategy, military strategy. It's, break them all down together so they suffer together and then build them back up and then they build this incredible it's bond. It's funny you mention that because it's it does feel a lot like it's very militant, you know, the way that we're sort of structuring. But you need, you need order. You yeah. know, there's a lot of chaos. There's lots of variables of kids, you know, like all kinds of things happening everywhere. <laughs> we're trying to manage it all. Uh, and so we need everybody within this group to look out for everybody else. So we can't, we can't like, we only have so many eyes out there. So we, so we're really looking at 
pushing this back on on these leaders in there. And so we're creating these leaders and we're, we're really trying to foster this culture where they're, they're looking out for all the other kids. And so, you know, it's really starting to emerge, but it w- wasn't there before. It was devoid of this sort of, um, you know, like family, like tight knit unity. Well, they that, just need to suffer a little bit. That's yeah. All. <laughs> what they need to do, but they also need to pay, keep each other accountable. And yeah. so that's really what we're establishing with like really tight, uh, reps and, and so they do these four quarters where they got to do like uh, the same thing every time. They got to do a specific amount of push ups, sit ups, you know, up downs, and all these things. And they have to literally like yell out their reps. And so we're very adamant about this. And we'll walk around and see if you're not counting reps and hammer them on it, you know. And it's we want it to echo, you know, through the entire right. valley. And so we're just we're like. And so, like other teams, soccer teams, we're going by, like, oh, you know, and, and <laughs> like, oh my god, you guys, and <laughs> tough, dude. This football, you know, like this is this is a unit, you, you know. And we all move together, and, every, and so that's starting to really blossom, and it it brings a little smile to my dude, face. Dude, these kids yeah. are are really really fortunate. I, you kids. know, are you gonna do the, uh, you know, you you fumble in practice, and then you have to carry the football at school all day long? Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember that, that quarterback's already on that, right? Yeah, now. where yeah. you had, you had to carry it around. Down, and then every time, so you, all they day long, yeah, they try and strip it. You strip it, 100 push ups yep. that you yep. have to knock out. Like, I'm already thinking marketing because we're we used to have such a good turnout for the community. Like, we'd have the biggest crowds because we, we just had this such this tight culture and like everybody knew, like, art. Like, you'd be randomly at a, a store and people, I saw your sack on Saturday. I'm like, really? You went? Wow, awesome. That's totally yeah. Friday night lights. Yeah, type deal. it's totally like that. So, we're trying to get out there in the community and and we're our next thing we're gonna do like a lift a thon when's our first official game i want to make sure we have that calendar so we yeah, don't so book it's something. a couple weeks so make sure uh, you I'll have you Doug put it or put it in base camp so we i would love to go yeah i definitely want to go dude we, yeah. i think we all should i think that'll be fun that'll be awesome it'll be interesting yeah we'll see before we get into the questions uh a few weeks ago we shouted out the new bedford downtown uh, post office in new bedford massachusetts And we got this message from St. John Barbell from the Mount Pleasant Post Office in New Bedford, Massachusetts, saying that he's the one that introduced Mind Pump to them. And then he needs a shout out. So I'm shouting. Wait, wait, wait. wait. (laughs) And also, also. Are they rival post offices? Yes, they are. He says, and also, we are the better post office. That's what he says. Oh, snap. (laughs) Wait a second. So, okay, last time we we, we shouted out the last, it was a post office. Yes. And you're telling me that this is another local or like local post office, and he, and they're very specific that we introduced Mind Pump to them, <laughs> and we're a better. Post I didn't know office. post offices were like I know, rivals. Hey. I know. I, did, did they did they say they listened to it uh, at work? I wonder if they listened to it in. The I don't know. That's great. Yeah. Which post office has better calves? That's what yeah. I, don't know. I feel like they need some delivery competition. That's great yeah, or something. That's great. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Head over to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. Try the best electrolyte drink you'll find anywhere with appropriate levels of sodium to improve your pumps and performance. Again, it's drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump and get a free sample pack. No joke. You go to that site. They'll hook you up with some free samples so you can find out why this is the fastest selling electrolyte drink on the market. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. Our first caller is Alec from La Jolla, California. Hey, what's up, Alec? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? So I just have a question. I'm looking for a recommendation for a program. So I do a lot of surfing, uh, also yoga and mobility work, and have a hard time keeping on muscle mass. So looking to take one of your programs. Excellent. Do you do any strength training now? I do, yeah, intermittently. Uh, nothing consistent, so I'm really looking for consistency. Okay, and and you want to be able to maintain your your performance too with your surfing and yoga and that kind of stuff, right? Exactly. Excellent. Yep. Okay, would you say you want to look like a sexy athlete? <laughs> Here, sure. Here's sure why thing. I'm asking. Here's why I said that. So I think the perfect or, or dude, me. Yeah. Here's no no just sexy, not athlete. Yeah. Here's here's the reason why Great I said that. Uh, we have something called a sexy athlete bundle that combines Maps Aesthetic, which is kind of a bodybuilding focus program. Really good for building muscle, but it also has MAPS Performance, which is an athletic training program. And what you do with the both of them in that particular bundle is you combine the two workouts. So you alternate between MAPS Aesthetic workouts with MAPS Performance, 
And you kind of get a little bit of both worlds, right? You get to sculpt and shape your body, build some muscle, but you also get to train your body to move and perform like an athlete, which it sounds like it's something that you value. The second thing I would say is uh, you definitely want to look at your nutrition. Sometimes people have trouble, oftentimes I would say people have trouble building and maintaining muscle just because their calories aren't high enough. So you want to kind of combine the two, bump your calories, high protein diet, and then follow the sexy athlete bundle, which is MAPS aesthetic with mass performance. So I want to I want to dive a little bit into the nutrition because we obviously you did, gave the short version because Doug uh, wouldn't allow you to say everything. But up, I'm reading your question right now, and it sounds like you've tried to gain muscle in the past and you've struggled with that. And I'm guessing that has a lot to do with you teach classes, you're uh, super active, you're you're surfing. Uh, it sounds like you're probably burning a lot and you struggle with probably building. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Okay. So uh, nutritionally kind of what, what do you see? I mean, are you consistent with the way you eat? Are you inconsistent? Do you, have get, you tracked at all? Yeah. I have tracked in the past and it's pretty intuitive. You know, I eat when I'm hungry and I don't eat when I'm not. Uh, I know I, I also track my activ my activity as well. So sometimes I see I'm burning well over, you know, 3000 calories in a day roughly. And uh, so I try to match that and, you know, it's eating that much is sometimes pretty difficult, but you, I do my best. You know, Alec, I'm going to say something real quick. You said you're eating intuitively, which is great, but intuitive eating is keeping you at your body weight, which sounds like you're healthy. You can move well, but your goal is to gain a little bit of muscle. This is when you're going to want to eat a little more than what your body would intuitively want you to eat. So if you're okay staying where you're at, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to gain a little bit, you're going to have to purposely and consciously add more food. Because Some strategies for someone like you who's this active is, and I wouldn't give this strategy to most people, but considering the position you're in, and how active you are is actually drinking like some liquid calories before and after a lot of your activity. Yeah, so beer. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's Cheers. honestly in your situation with trying to gain, I mean, that's actually probably better than water. Uh, but you, you, drinking drinks that have calories, they're easy for you to take down. And that could be a protein shake, that could be some sugar filled drink. And I know some people are probably cringing because that's not great advice for the average person. But somebody who struggles with putting uh, muscle, putting uh, weight on and has a very active lifestyle, one of the best things that helped me because I struggled with the same thing was before I'd go play basketball, in your case, before you go surf, I would make sure I drank like a five to 700 calorie uh, drink or like shake that had, was loaded full of calories before. And then as soon as I was done, I would make sure I, I fill back up again. And that will kind of help get to the calorie intake you need. Another thing was also prioritizing uh, my breakfast. I, I was real easily, I could get to 11 o'clock without really eating much because I wasn't that hungry in the morning. And then I was constantly playing catch up the, the rest of the day. So if struggling, because we could put you on the best program in the world, which would be MAPS Anabolic and then Performance. But if you're not feeding the body enough calories to build, you're going to have a hell of a time. You might feel stronger. You might feel good and mobile because of the great programming. But as far as adding more muscle and more size, you may struggle to do that if we don't, uh, don't hit your calorie intake on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. All right. So, so do you have the programs that I had talked about that are in the Sexy Athlete Bundle, MAPS Aesthetic and MAPS Performance? No, I don't. All right, we'll send those over to you, Alex. So follow them again in that bundle. We actually explain how you can combine the two programs. So some people like to do more of MAPS performance in that blend because they like more of the athletic you know, parts. Other people will add a little more at MAPS aesthetic in that blend because they're looking more for the aesthetic aspects. So. I'm going to I'm gonna push you in the direction of more MAPS aesthetic and even modify performance because as you start to get towards the back half of performance, there is a lot of movement and mm -hmm. you're a very active guy already. So I would probably back off on some of the uh, stuff towards the end of the program as far as I think we even get any cardio recommendation in or the... You don't need that. Yeah. You're doing yeah, that, that already. That's phase four. So mm -hmm. phase one and two basically kind of stick with that where we're just working on max strength and, and also, you know, proprioceptive type strength. So, um, you know, that would work and in, in, in go well with what you're trying to do on top of that. Also, in the in the days in between is really where you want to maintain your surf skill and, you know, all these other activities that, uh, you know, you're, 
you're a part of that. That's a great fit for that on your in between like mobility or uh, if it's aesthetic, it's your uh, you know focus days. Yeah, I think the mobility part portion of performance is gonna is gonna be great for you uh i would just back half of that program gets pretty intense as far as how much we are moving and, and burning so a guy like you doesn't need that but the mobility is going to be phenomenal it's going to complement everything that you're doing maps aesthetic though is where i would push you to spend more of your time yeah in. you know what's good about the mobility too alec is i know you do in in your comment in your written question it says you've been practicing yoga for a long time mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. which you probably have great ranges of motion i'm sure your flexibility is pretty good um, the mobility and performance really focuses on connection. Now, I know <clears throat> when yoga is performed correctly that when you're getting into poses and positions, you're active, right? You're not just holding a static stretch, but rather trying to stay active. So you're getting some of that with yoga. You'll love the mobility movements in performance. In fact, you should notice an improvement e even in your yoga uh, practice from the mobility programming in mass performance. Right on. All right, man. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thank you guys so much. You got it. Yeah, I want to touch on the what he said about eating intuitively. You know, eating intuitive is a great way to maintain general leanness, general health, general fitness. It's what I like to refer to as the baseline. Mm -hmm. Moving above or below that. Yeah. So you want to move above that baseline or below. Like, let's say my baseline when I'm healthy, when I eat intuitively, my body kind of settles around. 11% body fat, 12, which I, I'm, I tend to be more naturally lean. It's great for me. If I want to get down to 7% body fat, it's not intuitive. I have to like push my well, body. Well, it's to get the leaner. difference between having a, a general goal versus a specific goal, in my yes, opinion, yes. right? So if you generally want to be healthy and strong and fit, it's a great place to live. Yeah. Intuitive eating and exercising is, is excellent. And there's no reason for you to get, you know, crazy with tracking and weighing and, and all that stuff. But if you have a very specific goal, I want to add five pounds of muscle or 10 pounds right. of muscle, or I want to lose. You want to maximize efficiency and you yeah. really like direct it towards there like as, as quickly as possible. And That's it's not, what you have to do. And it's not to say that you can't get to a place where you can kind of do that intuitively. I just think that's a that's a that's a black belt of nutrition to be able to say it's a pursuit. It's not a goal. Yeah, does that make sense? Not yeah. a it's not a destination. This is just well, what even the best of us, you know, you go back and you you figure out what you're tracking. You're like, yeah. oh wow, that I didn't even realize I was adding that in. So. Still happens to me today. I, I always I'm off. Always, rarely ever am I like right on the the calories and and then also you're burning because. Yep. You know, maybe I'm maybe I'm dialed in. I guessed really close on my calorie intake, but then I realized, holy shit, I was moving way less than what I thought too. So right. all that stuff matters. But and that that was my concern with the performance recommendation with this guy because Maps Performance is definitely there's a lot more moving in that. Than well, there. towards the later phases, that was yeah. a good point you made. Yeah, absolutely, because yeah. the, the beginning phases are really good. For yeah, one and two functional. Fine. Strength you start getting to three, four, and there's a lot more. There's an endurance component in there. So sure. because we're thinking of training an athlete and. This guy is having a hard time keeping up with the calories. One of the best things I ever did was actually switch, and this is why I know we we went in the sexy athlete bundle. But I also could make the case for Maps Anabolic totally. for him because one of the one of the biggest hurdles I ever got over was reducing my movement. And one of the best things I did was get out of a five to seven day a week program and drop down to a two to three day training volume, and that was way better for muscle gaining. Yep. From, you know. Our next caller is Ed Yari from Florida. Hey, Ed Yari, how can we help you? Hi, guys. How are you? I'm a huge fan, so thank you for taking the call. I um, I'm a new mom, so I got the the new mom bundle you guys put out a few months ago, and I am almost done with Maps um, Anabolic. I'm on the third phase, but my body composition changed for the worse. Like my my fat, it's just it got higher for some reason uh, maybe it's my lack of sleep you know the baby's just not having a good time with that and I was just wondering if you have any recommendations if I should change anything in the program and also what I can do once I'm done with um, anabolics yeah no great question so um, you said bad sleep just how bad is your sleep um, well, the baby's waking up once or twice a night consistently and once I put him down to bed I'm I'm getting like maybe five, six hours tops every night. Okay. You know, so this is this is a very important point, and I'm, I'm glad you have this question because people need to understand this. Sleep is imperative, uh, just like diet um, or exercise in terms of getting your body to, to progress or change. 
And sometimes what we do aside from, because right now you can't control your sleep, right? You have a baby. I know this. I have a young one too. And sometimes you can't, there's not much you could do to control this. It's, it's hard, right? So you're sleeping five or six hours a night, which is not very much. So you have all these other factors that you can control. And sometimes the best you can do is mitigate the damage. In other words, you're maybe not going to get the best shape of your life, but you might be preventing your body from really declining uh, with, the, with your workouts and nutrition. Now, the second thing I want to ask is, uh, are you breastfeeding? Yes. Okay. I am. Okay. So while you're breastfeeding, your hormones uh, are not necessarily conducive to fitness. Now, it's not a huge thing, but they are, your hormones are set up in a way while you're breastfeeding where it might be more difficult to build muscle, get stronger, burn body fat, that kind of stuff. Um, are you noticing any other effects in the body? Is your strength any better? Are you Yes. Noticing everything else is like great. I'm, I'm, making gains at the gym, right? Um, a lot less stressful. Um, I just, and, and the change is not that big. It went from like 32, uh, 31.8 fat, right? To like 32. So like oh. just a tiny little bit. And then my water weight just went up to, um, I'm just reading up the, the test that they did at the gym. But uh, it's not a lot. It's just that since I'm feeling so great, right, and I'm not weighting myself or anything. All right, that that's your yeah. that's your number one indicator right there. The fact that you you're feeling much better and you're getting stronger in the gym. I would actually. So I don't know how they're testing or who, who's testing yeah. you. Is it right. what it, kind of test is it? It's um, it's a in body like you kind of like oh, step yeah. on the machine barefoot and then you Sal hold the hand those. Do you, sideways. Do you have the the paper with you from the in body? I do. Yeah. Okay, can, I do. You, I can you hold it up for me for a second? Uh, which one, the first or the second? Yeah, the, both of them. Both of them. Yeah. Now take those and throw them in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love it. So here, so here's the deal. Okay, if you're stronger, it's very hard to get stronger and lose muscle. I just yeah. want you to know that. It's, I mean, it's possible. Uh, there's like CNS issues going on, or but extremely rare. If you're stronger, you probably didn't lose muscle. Now, the body fat percentage on those things, I'll I'll tell you right now. I can literally mm -hmm. make my body fat percentage go down by three or four percent in the same day yep. on those stupid oh, uh machines by modifying my water intake yeah. and carbohydrates. They're, yeah, they're 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 super hard to be accurate. I, I wouldn't rely on those. Your most accurate measures are your performance. That's the most, because it's you're either stronger or you're not. That's very objective. How you feel. If you're telling me you have more energy and you feel good, that's a wonderful indicator. Body fat percentage tests, you know, even it's, even it's, caliper tests. It's not it's not bad, but it, you just have to you just have to. It's a guide, and it's mm -hmm. it's just another tool to get feedback. But you getting stronger and how you feel is more important than that. Like if you we were to or, order like, well, dude, it, it went it went up 0.2%. Th that's that what means I'm saying. Nothing. My, yeah. So the fact that it is close, if it's within a percent to three percent where you were, I'm not really tripping up or down. So a percent to 3%, I'm not even tripping what's going on there. So long as the feedback I'm getting from my client is, man, I feel better at them. I'm getting stronger. We're adding weight to the bar every time right. we go in here. Like everything feels good, but I just, I, the scale's not moving or the body fat percentage isn't moving. That's okay. We're actually, you're probably, believe it or not, in a really good place right yeah. now. Do you feel difference in the way your clothes fit and all that too? Like, yes. And okay. I have guns now. Look at this. Uh, exactly. <laughs> See, all right. The definition's uh, coming. Like, there's a lot of positive things yes, happening. Yes, it's great. I feel I feel really good. I was just so surprised, yeah. and um, so yeah, I just I thought of uh, uh, reaching out to you guys. Uh, you converted me from a uh, cardio bunny to like uh, weight training and following a program. I actually know what I'm doing at the gym now. I'm a lot more confident in that space. Awesome. And. Um, so yeah, what what should I do after baths? Though? Okay, well, okay, so um, I'll tell you, but let me ask you a couple other questions. Um, okay. If you don't mind me asking, how tall are you, and how much do you weigh? I am five six, and I am one seventeen, one sixteen. Oh, dude. oh yeah, you're you're, you're, you're doing you're, great. You're you're doing absolutely fine, especially if your strength uh, has gone up. You're telling me you have guns now. Here's okay. You want you want to know the truth? I'm going to break this down. I'm going to piss off a lot of gym owners and trainers. Do you know why there's an in body machine in the gym? 
So they can sell you, you know, sessions. One hundred percent. Yes. That's, you feel that's, bad about yourself. That's the tool. So a trainer is going to look at your thing and he's like, "Oh, uh, we could do this." So we, it's it, it, it presents itself as an objective measure. It's not extremely objective. You, all those other things are far more important. That literally throw that in the garbage. I would I would totally toss that. The only time I use body fat percentage with people were caliper or underwater weighing, and it was when we were like specific. Like yeah. I'm training someone and they're advanced, and we're trying to see if we can you know manipulate their body fat by a percent or two. Otherwise, and- it was a total waste of time. Performance was a way better measure. In terms of success. Okay, so after MAPS Anabolic, if you're feeling good, you're feeling strong, you're feeling fit, the next uh, program to follow is MAPS Performance. That's the best program to follow. You're still going to continue progressing. You're going to still feel better. You're going to notice that your strength is still improving, but now there's more of an emphasis on movement, integrating the whole body, proprioceptive ability. This is knowing where your body is in space. You're going to get a little bit more of of a stamina component towards the end of that program. Um, okay. that's the next program I would say you should follow. And if you don't have that, we'll make sure we send that over to you. Oh, thank you so much. I love it. I got like, oh my God, I have gotten the MILF t-shirt and I always get super funny comments at the gym when I wear it. <laughs> and then when they read it, right, they're like, where'd you get that? So I have told two moms at the gym to go and get it for you guys. Uh, that's um, great. Excellent. You're great. a walking billboard. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for wearing that. Thank you for, for, for listening to the podcast. And again, when you go back to that gym, if they ask you to do the embody, just give them the finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So aggressive. Thank yeah, you. I like it. <laughs> thank Thanks you so much, guys. No problem. Right. I hate those stupid machines. I swear uh, to God. I, I've had to... I, uh, more often than not, I've had to like, I, help people I, through. I love them. I like them. It's a you know, it's just another tool that we have that we didn't have you know several decades ago. So the fact that we have it's just we as had long as you know all the little I mean discrepancies that they provide. yeah like like this right here like but okay. I I knew right away that was why my question right away was how, what what she's doing how, how is she getting that that body fat percentage and it's common. That, I mean, how sad is that? Like she's got all these wonderful metrics for all intents and purposes she's kicking ass yeah especially considering she's got a newborn which is really tough yeah and then she gets this test and now she's like oh my gosh she's questioning all those positive things it's terrible yeah, yeah. i have i don't know if it's terrible it's just, it's just that conversation needs to be had not a lot of good trainers uh know how to have that conversation yet to your point that it's a great selling tool for them. Most of their desired outcome is to get you on personal training sessions. So they're going to lean whichever way is more advantageous for selling more sessions. So, uh, but the, the conversation is just simply that it's just one more tool that we have to give, get feedback on the direction. I love it. Especially when I, I am on like a bulk, right. And I'm putting weight on, I like to do it multiple times, and if I get multiple readings showing that my body fat percentage is is dramatically gone up, I adjust my diet. You know what, though? I think you need to explain, though, how you do it, because I've seen you do it, and yeah. you do it at the same time every day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Same food, yeah. same well, because everything. Because I, long time ago, when that M-Body first came out, I intentionally fucked with it in a day. I went and did it three times in a day, uh, throughout the day, and I played with my water, my carb intake, the time, everything, and I could get a, a readings yeah. that were five, seven percent different all over the place, all over the place. So that that's what makes them. But if you do a good job of, say, staying fasted, doing it first thing in the morning, no water, no anything, they should be pretty close and a good gauge on, OK, I'm, I'm just adding that. OK, I feel good. Strength is going good. And then on top of that, body fat percentage is hovering around the same place. All right, I'm in a good place. Yeah. Now, if it came back and it was mm-hmm. like dramatically off, I still wouldn't freak out. I would test again. You know, just let's let's stay the course for another week. Let's test again. Does it stay on that trajectory or does it level off or go back the other direction? So Yeah, and it's important. I, I think that's an important point. You control all – you're essentially doing a study on yourself, if you will, where you're controlling all the controllables because you want to make sure everything is the same each time you do it. So that it doesn't waver because your know, your water intake changed, for example. But I loved it for this. So when I would get ready for, and of course, it, it it's for someone who's competing, I think it's really helpful, right? So when I would go from switching from bulking over to a cut, like for the show, um, a lot of times I would cut 
a little more aggressive than I should. Uh, and I like, okay, I'm going to reduce, you mm -hmm. know, six, 700 calories and I'm starting to move more and I'm dropping weight. Well, that's great. But then when I go and do a body fat test, you know, two weeks in a row and I see that two weeks in a row, I have lost as much muscle as I have lost body fat, you know, that I'm not moving percentage wise. Yeah. I adjust, Oh, I need to feed more. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting too much. And so I increase calories. So if it wasn't for that, I'd have a heart cause you would, I would definitely be looking like I'm getting smaller and leaner and heading the right direction. But because I had a resource like that, that I could use that. Okay. I'm probably cutting too fast and too aggressively. So I think they're useful tools. I just think that you get a, a client who isn't versed enough in all the other factors and mm -hmm. variables that play into the reading of that number. And, you know, quite frankly, the, how you feel in strength is far more important. Yeah. And it's, you know, even with competing, I've actually had friends that has, this has screwed them up where. Yeah. I have buddies that don't use it. I have well, buddies. That, no, I have, I know people who have you have gotten body fat tests and they're not using the mirror because when you're on stage, it's about how you look yeah. mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, my body fat's going down. I'm doing okay. Even though people are like, oh, you're not looking as sharp or, you know, it's not going down, but I'm looking really good. I'm going to get, I'm going to cut more aggressive and it screws with them. I think it really important to understand understand kind of what you're explaining there's yeah. you got to look at a lot of different things yeah no i'm using steps and what i've been training consistently i'm taking all and that's why i like it because it's just one more piece of data you're aggregating all of the metrics yeah, that, together that's yeah. relatively close yes it can be manipulated but if you do if you tease out a lot of things that will make it a huge difference like if you're uh inconsistently tracking your water and you test that thing one day on a Monday at noon and then another time at seven o'clock at night and think that the carbon tank and the water intake difference is not going to change that you're a fool. It's yeah. going to, it's yeah. going to manipulate that machine. And so you have to be consistent. You have to at least tease out the things that are definitely yeah. going to dramatically I've, change I've just it. seen more people get messed up by those tests than, than not. That's all. I've just seen more people come to me and be like, my God, I was doing so good. My performance is good. My clothes yeah. fit good. Or or the reverse. Wow, I thought I was gaining so much body fat, but it says I got leaner. I'm like, well, uh, you did gain yeah, body fat. Your average person isn't going to consider all those other metrics. It messes it with their together. head. Yeah, yeah so no, it's going to look at it like straight up. Like, oh no, I'm gaining fat. Yeah, that's what happened to her. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's a great tool for the average person who doesn't know how. I mean, but for a coach, it's a phenomenal tool. I loved it. I yeah. loved having a body fat test. That's a good point. Yeah. Having someone like you decipher it through all the other metrics and control yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it's no no different than a doctor using some of the tools that he has to get to the bottom yeah. if you're healthy or not. doesn't mean like the blood pressure reading isn't the end-all be-all if you're healthy or not. BMI you can pretty much throw out half the time. Yeah, too. yeah. yeah. so it's, it, it's just another thing that you have to be careful of. And I do think this is very common, that client, I, even the scale. So I, I, I was looking for either one, she was going to tell me she doesn't do body fat tests and she's just using the scale as her thing or she does some, you know, uh, you know, what do you call the digital electronic impedance? Yeah, yeah the electronic yeah, impedance, impedance type yeah. of machine that is you know easily manipulated up or down. Our next caller is Lex from Georgia. Hey, what's up, Lex? How can we help you? Uh, so I originally was just gonna give you a little bit of my background and then ask y'all what maps program to get, but I got a little impatient and I went ahead and bought the starter bundle. Okay, so. I'm currently doing uh, about about to go into phase two of anabolic and also doing the no six pack, uh, no BS six pack formula. Um, so I guess really my question would be how to format the the programs and so like the the foundational workouts and trigger workouts from anabolic with the no BS and then maybe where to go from there. Yeah, that's a, okay. So I'm glad you asked that because I actually designed both programs to be work, to work together, right? So in MAPS Anabolic, you have the option of doing between two to three foundational workouts a week. In the No BS Six Pack formula, uh, same thing. You can do two to three foundational workouts a week. Now the No BS Six Pack formula for people watching focuses entirely on the core, building the muscles of the core so they're more visible even at higher body fat percentages. Both programs also have trigger sessions on the off days. And trigger sessions are these really short 8 to 10 minute low intensity workouts typically done with bands or body weight. And what you're doing is just kind of trying to get a little bit of a burn, a little bit of a pump, send a small muscle building signal. So a lot of people ask this question, 
how do I do both programs? Well, here's what you do. You alternate the foundational workouts of each. So Monday, MAPS Anabolic Foundational Workout. Tuesday, No BS Six Pack Foundational Workout. Wednesday, MAPS Anabolic Foundational Workout, and so on. Then on the foundational workouts days of MAPS Anabolic, you do trigger sessions from the No BS Six Pack Formula. And on the foundational workout days of the No BS Six Pack Formula, you do trigger sessions for MAPS Anabolic. So every day or most days, you're doing a foundational workout from one of the programs and trigger sessions for the other program. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, so I've been doing, uh, I would say, a version of that. Um, I, I have too many questions, if that's okay. Yeah, go for <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so one would be, so like today, uh, I did... Um, a foundational anabolic workout in the morning do and, and then this evening I'm gonna do one trigger session from the no BS do you, would that suffice yeah for the day oh yeah no that's good uh, that's absolutely great at least one trigger session a day right on those off days is good now you can do up to three and I'll I, I can't stress this enough and I, I tell people this all the time and I really think people overlook this aspect of especially maps anabolic. The trigger sessions, especially when you do them frequently, two or three times a day on the off days, make a huge difference. It's like a turbocharger to your body. So mess around with that a little bit. So what you might do is MAPS anabolic foundational workout in the morning, and then at the end of it, do a little trigger session for the no BS six-pack formula. And then in the afternoon, do another trigger session from the no BS six-pack formula. And then at night, do a third trigger session. Try that out. Remember, keep the intensity low on those trigger sessions. And then literally, not exaggerating, Lex, within three or four days, you should notice a difference in your strength and how things are feeling and looking. They're that effective. So give that a shot. It doesn't take up a lot of space and time. Like I said, they're about eight minutes long each. You could do them kind of anywhere. See how your body feels. As far as where to go next, too, we we wrote them in in this order to go from anabolic to performance to aesthetic. So that would be the ideal sequence of the program. So after you're done with anabolic, to move into performance. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do you have performance? Uh, no, I don't. I just I got the starter bundle, so it has you know great the place. nutrition. Okay, great place to stuff. start, by the way, too. Yeah. So go buy Maps Performance. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna give. <laughs> we're gonna send that. We're gonna send that over to you for free. Okay. And I appreciate you uh, you signing up for the starter bundle. That's actually a great place uh, to get going. For people who don't know, the starter bundle includes Maps Starter, Maps Anabolic, Maps Prime, and then the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. Not, how, not how, start. Not starter. Just Anabolic and Prime. Oh, Anabolic and Prime. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. Now, how are you doing with uh, the nutrition aspect of it? Have you gotten into the Intuitive Nutrition Guide? Yeah, no, I've definitely read the whole thing. Uh, that's, to be honest with you, that's a whole nother can of worms for me. The the, sh the very short version would be that I used to do a lot of working out and high endurance, like so not for strength and 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 a deficit all the time. So I've switched gears completely because I let you know I'm like anybody else um, that follows y'all. I listen to y'all, you know, five hours a day, um, just catching up on all y'all's episodes. <laughs> while I'm working. But anyway, I, I'm i loving the strength gains. You know, the trigger sessions do exactly what you say. I mean, y'all y'all are 100% right on all the stuff y'all preach. The only problem I'm struggling with is because I'm eating more and doing less caloric burn type exercises, I, I had uh, a good core um, and it's starting to actually disappear even okay. though I'm doing the stuff we just discussed. So, yeah. So my, my recommendation, and have you tracked like your, your steps by chance in the day? Do you know how, I, how much you're moving? I track everything. Okay. I'm, so give me an idea of what you're, what you're moving a day. Like what's an average day for you as far as steps? So now since I started with y'all's programs, it's 10,000 steps. It used to be more. Um, and then, you know, depending on what I'm doing for my, I, I work on a farm. So sometimes it's heavy step day sometimes it's not but definitely average is ten thousand. so i lowered that tremendously stopped doing cardio except once or twice on the weekend so one of the one of the, one of the things i do with a client when this happens when we switch somebody from like moving so much and probably running and training endurance and burning a ton of calories and then we're switching over to kind of 
speed the metabolism up and build muscle and they're getting the strength gains. But if we start to see that we're adding body fat a little bit faster, like I, I expect you to give a, put a little bit on, but I also don't want that to get out of control because the idea is that we, we just put lean mass on for the most part, even though it's inevitable we're going to put a little bit of body fat on. If I get feedback from my client that it's a little more than we would like and, and, and if I start to notice it too, then what I'll normally do is just have them either one – will reduce calorie. And this has to do with if I think you're in a good calorie place. So if I think for your size, you're in a pretty good calorie place, then I might restrict a couple hundred calories a day and pull back a tiny bit. If I think I want to get you up higher calories, you're still not in a good place for your size. I might add movement, but not high endurance, high, like explode, not just walking. Like I just, hey, okay, if we're averaging 10,000, let's average 12,000 steps, or let's be aware of the days that you're not working out on the farm and you're more sedentary, and let's make sure you're active on those days to make up for the discrepancy from the other days. So, those are two kind of options. Either one, we can, and you could do a blend of the two. We could go, let's just move a little bit more and then also maybe cut back a tiny bit on calories. The only reason why I don't like to cut back on calories with someone like you, if you were, you were a chronic under eater and over trainer, um, I, I don't want to go, if you're if you're under 2,000 calories, I definitely don't want you lower than that. But if you're eating 3,000 calories, I could take 200 calories a day from you and you'd be fine. Yeah, what are you at? Do you know how many calories you're eating right now? Yeah, so I, I've been trying to eat 3,000. And I believe me, I don't, I'm not one of those people that struggle to eat. I, I'm, I'm actually, the, the whole reason I'm doing kind of switching gears and doing y'all's programs and, and eating, you know, regimen is because I was hungry all the time and I just got tired of it. So I'm trying to eat 3,000, but I have those issues uh, that like I'll wake up, the scale will say something more, and then I'll eat tremendously less for the, that day. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You, you, okay, so I, I would say maybe get rid of the scale for a little bit. Um, that can mess with people's heads. So let's not look at the scale. Kind of judge on how you feel, your performance. You know, waist circumference is pretty good. Weight can fluctuate quite a bit. I mean, I can gain four pounds of water in a day. Just well, especially if you're a good sized guy. If yeah, you're, I don't know how big you are, but if you're over at all two hundred pounds or around there, you could easily fluctuate seven to nine pounds. Oh yeah, about. but you know, waist circumference that's a little bit better. That can measure your body fat a little bit more accurately. But yeah, don't look at the scales much. That can mess you up because you know that would do that to me too in the reverse, right? If I was trying to gain. It's like I found myself uh, subconsciously increasing my intake of like high sodium foods because it would make the scale go up. And like, oh, this this particular meal makes me gain weight. So, get rid of the scale a little bit and kind of listen to your body, see how you feel. And you can always cut calories down a little bit if you feel like you're putting on body fat a little bit too fast. But it does sound like you're trying to speed up your metabolism. In 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 which case, I'd say you're you're for the most part in the right direction. Can can I ask you one small question? So, if this is a three for if like my, my six slash eight pack. Yeah. I sound like an asshole, but that's what I had and it's disappearing, but the weight isn't actually changing. Like I can, all right. So I'm five, nine and I stay between one fifty and one fifty five. Okay. Um, but so the, I'm still there, but I mean, my, my core is without a doubt disappearing but i feel better in other areas because because of the strength gain. well you're so, also I don't know. so keep this in mind too okay so uh, right away when you increase calories you increase carbohydrates you increase sodium yeah your body's your body's naturally going to hold on to a little water so if you're kind of hovering around the same weight and yeah, you look a little bit softer, maybe in the midsection. I would guess that that a lot of that is just a little bit of water retention. That you're, I bet you, if I just made you not eat for two days and pull back on water, I bet that those abs would pop right out. And that normally tells me that you're just kind of holding on to a little bit of extra water based off the probably the carb intake, sodium intake, and water you're intake. Are you stronger? Uh, definitely. Well, the the thing is, I didn't do legs. Uh, for a, a long time because of injuries and stuff. And not only am I doing it now, but it's, you know, the, the lifts y'all love, which is the compound lift. So I'm starting to lose sort of, you know, some of the mushiness from, you know, my stomach down and starting to gain muscle really quick. I mean, it's only been two and a half weeks. Oh, dude, you're on fire, yeah, bro. Especially yeah, yeah. if you're stronger, you're yeah, kicking you're, ass. You're doing good. And, and if Trust you had the process and you said you had like an eight pack, like you were shredded. I mean, yeah, I got down to like I said, I was I was you know always eating in a deficit, and you know I I've gone through all those problems that you know a lot of people on your you know that y'all talk to orthorexia, body dysmorphia. I'm trying to improve. 
Oh, dude. Boy. Get, maybe maybe get, maybe send Sal a naked picture in his DMs. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I don't know. He's always trying to get that. For, listen, uh, you're, One you're going- One of these times it'll happen. You're going in the right direction. Now that you said that, it may, everything's starting to make sense. Get rid of the scale. Stop obsessing about your your eight pack that you were shredded before. You probably need to gain a little bit of body fat to gain muscle and strength. Stop weighing yourself and see if you can move in the direction of focusing on performance. It's going to direct you much better than looking at your abs and weighing yourself on the scale. Yeah, get strong, man. You're doing good. Gotcha. Well, appreciate that. No problem. Um, we'll send Maps Performance over to you. But thank you so much. And I know y'all are busy people and. I'd love to give a whole speech, but um, I basically just want to say that y'all do so much for people all the time. I mean, you've already done so much for me already. Um, anyway, I long story short, I'm a citrus farmer here in Georgia, and uh, we have eight different varieties of citrus, and come harvest time this fall, if y'all are cool with it, obviously I can talk to y'all later. I'd love to send y'all a box of fruit. Oh, hell yeah. Since. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Let's do it. Especially citrus. You're talking to an Italian, you know, son of immigrants. Are you kidding me? So, it, it, <laughs> by the way, thanks for what you do. You know, the work that you do, I mean, you, you feed, you help feed the country. So, uh, I appreciate what you're doing as well. All right. Well, thank you. No problem. Thanks, Lex. All right. Thank y'all. It's like the, the mind games. That's the big thing. Well, that's so kind of the, people. the theme today, right? The yeah. theme has been kind of that. It, it sounds like we've had several people that are actually doing pretty damn good. Exactly. I mean, that, it's crazy, right? He's only two weeks in, feeling stronger, already noticing. Legs putting, are building. Yeah, legs are building, but because you got a little bit of. They just don't have the right people around them, you know, convincing them that everything's going well. Yeah. yeah. And if you take somebody, by the way, too, who's walking around with an eight pack, I've talked about this before on the show. Like when you get really, really lean like that, the the slightest adjustment or change in calories, water, anything like that oh, would yeah. completely yeah. change. It's crazy. Dude, how much. you go up, you if you're six percent body fat and you go up one percent body fat, it's noticeable. It's drastic. You're yeah. at twelve percent body fat, you go up one percent, you can't even tell. Yeah, right? and they, and that keeps getting it's more you know, you're at fifteen percent and you change two or three percent and you can't even really tell. Exactly. He just started transforming to, you know, a whole different direction. So, you know, he's gotta yeah. give himself some time to really like, you know, adapt and stuff. Yeah, no, he sounds like he's doing great. It's just exactly what Sal alluded to. I mean, a lot of this is up in your head. I mean, you you're gonna have a little bit softer of a midsection. You increase calories like that and you switch from burning as much as you were burning for sure but totally sounds like he's doing great Especially, and that's where i want someone to be right so uh, he's actually in the perfect place that i want a client in yep. his situation yep. is i don't want the scale he to move gain my, yeah weight, yeah but. i don't want our weight to really move you're much, stronger but we're stronger adding more calories and you're moving less holy are you kidding me yeah, yeah. like that is like it's the, all gonna happen that means we're like literally right on track we just got to be patient our next caller is Catherine from virginia hey Catherine, how can we help you hi kathy <laughs> Hey, um, so I am pregnant. I'm due in November and um, I'm also a police officer. So my question is going to be, how can I come back from pregnancy? Obviously having just delivered a kid, um, but then also go right into um, a very physically demanding position where I, my physical fitness is going to be, you know, it could be uh, life and death for me or for somebody else. What do you guys recommend? Yeah, no. What, what wow. are we doing right now? Um, so right now I'm still able to, um, to lift, do plenty of conditioning. Um, I do, I'm running maps aesthetic right now. I'm in phase two. Um, been doing that for about a year. Um, and I just, I just keep making progress. So I've stayed on it. Um, I'm doing sprints. Well, once or twice a week, about one to 200 meters, um, doing some stair sprints, doing some tire flips to try and keep that conditioning up. Um, and then able to keep up with, um, uh, the priming as I need to, and then uh, core activation work. Yeah, you're pretty, a bad yeah, pretty sure you're going to be all right. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're a badass. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much for yeah. what you do. Yes. Uh, you're good people like you protecting especially other these people. last couple of years. Really, uh, especially yeah. last couple of years. So thanks for what you do, and thanks for listening to the show. So most of the work that happens uh, postpartum is actually what happens before you get pregnant That's and right. while you're mm -hmm. pregnant because you're really setting your body up well for a nice bounce back afterwards. Now, that being said, I do want to say this. There's there is a definitely a challenge that I've encountered. I've trained lots and lots of women pre, during, and post-pregnancy, and I've trained a lot of uh, women who were very athletic and very fit going into it and then coming out. And here's the challenge I always run into. They almost always overestimate 
their ability postpartum. So here's the main thing that I want you to, to, to consider, okay? there's a, a, Your entire body is going to maintain lots of strength, fitness, and yes, you're going to have a baby and all that stuff, but one part of your body is going to radically change and radically change its uh, recruitment pattern, and that has to do with the muscles of the core, okay? Especially in the third trimester of pregnancy, as the baby is really growing, it's stretching things out, your transverse abdominus stretches out, your abs stretch you're going to lose connection to these muscles, or at least in comparison to the way that you were connected to them before. Then you have the baby and you go to work out. And this is what happens to uh, a lot of people is they go work out and they're, they're going slow and they're like, you know what? I feel good. And then they can't figure out why their back is hurting or they can't figure out why their hips are bothering. They're like, you know, I feel strong. It's really weird. Like I'm using a weight that's light, but my back is starting to bother me or my hips are starting to bother me. Like what's going on? It's all about that core recruitment. So the program I'm going to recommend places special emphasis on connecting to those muscles and especially connecting to those muscles through other movements. And that's going to be MAP Starter. Now, the reason why I set this question up or the answer up the way I'm doing it is because someone as fit as you, as competitive as you, is going to go into MAP Starter and you're going to think, oh, this is easy. It's too easy. I can go harder. Don't do that. Go MAP Starter. Trust the program because what it's doing is it's trying as you follow the program, a lot of work on a physio ball, a lot of slow work. What you're going to do is you're going to reintegrate your core with the rest of your body. After MAP Starter, depending on how you feel, you could go into MAPS Anabolic. You might even be mm -hmm. able to go into MAPS Aesthetic, but do a whole cycle of MAP Starter as soon as you're cleared to work out. So, like Sal, we've all had lots of experience training clients like yourself in the exact situation you are. And I'll tell you that the question that you have is not going to be your problem and challenge. You are the type of person who I have to tell to calm down and like be okay with we might have to cut back on some things. Be okay with we might get a little softer for a little bit or a little weaker for a little bit. That's okay. You are absolutely crushing it. The fact that you are adding sprints and tire flips in MAPS aesthetic and you're pregnant right now, you're on pace to crush it. And you can absolutely, so long as your body is feeling and doing well, continue that on. I've had clients train pretty pretty hard all the way up into the final month. So you, as so long as you are feeling good and everything is fine, then you can continue on that pace. And like Sal said, that the the real work is done right now. I mean, you're obviously going to have a little bit of downtime right after you have your baby, but if you go into that pretty strong, you're going to rebound really quick. But then the 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 tendency that someone like you has is wanting to get right back into yep. it as fast as you can. It, it's totally the mindset, like yes. reestablishing stability and connection to your core like afterwards is going to be at the utmost importance so if you can highlight that as you know the priority uh you know transitioning again and reestablishing that you feel uh like like your body is nice and uh, supported then we can start you know getting back in into that sort of getting after it mode yeah. and, and talking to you is like talking to one of ourselves i mean this is we can relate to this this is how we all like when i tore my achilles this is the issue like i want to get back to myself and so as soon as i start feeling pretty good yeah I'm stretching. I'm stretching the boundaries. Katrina was the same way after her after her pregnancy. She wanted to get right into it right away. I remember wrestling mm -hmm. with her about just stay in starter. I know you. Oh, I'm already feeling good. Can we get the anabolic? Just relax. You're not. You didn't lose a bunch of muscle. You're still in great shape. It's gonna come back just as fast. Relax. So that that is actually the conversation. I feel like I can tell by your voice. I can tell by what you're doing already. Muscle memory is real. You know, it's all gonna come back. Yeah, you're gonna be good, man. You were already kicking ass right now and you, you you're doing the hard part which i think we get a lot of people that uh are already deep into pregnancy or already had a baby and then they're like what should i do now and they haven't done any training yeah. for the last nine months plus you're you've been maintaining that you're going to be just fine follow starter after the baby stick it all the way through even though you're going to feel like you can get into anabolic that's okay you're still going to progress in that program and then move back into like yeah an you know you know Catherine, the, the challenge with being uh for lack of a better term disconnected from certain muscles is you almost can't tell it's it's almost like you can't tell that you're disconnected you're like i feel okay but it's literally you're not connected to that muscle. I can't. I remember I had a client who, she was a competitive soccer player. She played, you know, Division One soccer, and then she was into fitness and same thing. And then after she had the baby, she's like, "I feel great. 
I feel like I can go run. Let's do it. And I said, no, you're not connected to your core. And we had kind of had this debate. And I had her get down into a vacuum position. So all fours. And I said, I want you to do a vacuum. And she sat there and she's like, oh, I can't. I can't bring it in. I'm like, it's hard to understand what it feels like to be disconnected from a muscle. Um, but it's hard. It's really hard to tell. So you got to kind of trust the process. But if you do, you're going to do great. You're going to do really, really good. But try not to overdo it, okay? Awesome. Will do. Yeah, we'll send that over to you. I mean, keep, keep getting those bad guys, okay? Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. And can I, can I please just compliment you on your professionalism? I've watched this organization grow over the past couple of years, and I've been so impressed by the integrity of y'all's work and, and what you're putting together. So thanks thanks for doing the good work and putting out a great product. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank uh, you so thank much. You. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, this this happened to Jessica. She, she she's you know she's obviously fit, strong, had the baby. Now she had a C section, so that had another complication. I could tell as soon as she started, bro. Yeah, yeah. and I she can, starts you, working out, and, I, and she's I, and, already getting after it. And she's yeah. like, my back. She's like, it's weird. Why is my back bothering? I'm like, honey, you're not your core yeah. is not firing the way it used to. We have to get that back. Get on the physio ball. Get, mm -hmm. I told her I literally took a ten and fifteen pound dumbbell. I said, this is <laughs> you can't get any heavier than this. Mm -hmm. And she started doing it, and lo and behold, everything started feeling Well, the, the thing that I had to explain to Katrina was, and it was hard for her, this because we had a very similar challenge, same thing. She trained most all the way through the entire pregnancy, had to take a few weeks off right after the baby, and then was right back in it, and she wanted to go ride an anabolic. And I'm like, no, we're going in starter. And then after the first week, she was already like, okay, I'm feeling good. I'm ready for anabolic. I'm like, no. And, and the thing that I try to explain to her, too, is that if you're getting results from starter, right? That's it's minimal volume in comparison to anabolic. Why would we go to anabolic? There's no reason to. I mean, the when we and I said, you know this. You hear me say it on the show a fucking thousand times. Yeah. Our goal is to do as little as possible right. to elicit the most amount of change. So if you're telling me you're progressing, you're getting stronger, you're feeling better week over week, why would we jump out of this program and move into more just because you can do more? Don't yep. why. So, and someone like this is more like us, more like Oh, yeah, wives. I can only imagine. If it was me, I would be a hard head. It would be hard yeah. to get me to do the same I thing. I know, I have to. I mean, and that's only fair that we admit that as we talk about this. Like, it, I, I feel so passionate about it and close to it because I know I have this, I'm be guilty of the same bullshit. Totally. I mean, I'm dealing with it right now. I'm, was, we had some momentum going. I felt so good at hitting it so hard and heavy. And now my elbow hurts, my shoulder hurts, my hip hurts. Why? Because I was pushing it and yep. overreaching. Yep, yep. This is, this is the value of having a coach sometimes to mm -hmm. tell you to pull back. Yeah. Oh, right? totally. Walk you yeah. down. Now, look, if you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. Head over there, check out all of our free guides, right? So we have lots of free information to help you build your body, shred off body fat. We even have guides for personal trainers, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. This comment here is from Z Mac. This was Justin's workout video. He says, when Justin has a pump, he looks so much more muscular than everyone else. Wow. Oh. Wow, dude. He, yeah, he totally hear that? fuck. It's proof. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey, did, you have your, did you have your wife leave that comment? <laughs> it's not my wife, dude. I got, I got fans, you guys. Next right. comment is from Laura Carr. This is from Justin's workout video. I love this. I respect that the guys waited so long to show their workouts. This is hella inspirational and seems legit. Also love seeing Sal's workout. Now Doug and Adam need to complete the set. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. missing out on uh, let's Let's get you guys in on the phone. Save the best for last. Yeah. It's just funny because it's like they just don't know. I'm not going to show them what I really do. Mm. You can't give up the secrets. No, you do your your, your pantless workouts. I don't want you, do you guys home. to copy me after mm -hmm. that. You know, that's he, how it works out at home, Justin. I know. He leaves the shirt. He wears on. tights and nothing else. That's, mm -hmm. 